Good morning everybody, it's Wednesday and the second day I've actually um, feel that I'm maybe on the road to recovery, I feel a lot better than I have for the weeks, um, the last two weeks. As I said in my video yesterday, it's like being underwater with everybody on the boat telling you to come up and you can't because you're stuck and you're attached to an anchor that's pulling you further and further down and that's how it's been and it's also been like I don't know if any of you have had these symptoms but it's also like wanting to step out of your skin that you can't stand being in this body anymore and it's got nothing to do with illness, it's got nothing to do with pain, it's got to do with not wanting to be on this planet any longer. Um, I know that we're more than our physical being, I know. But it takes some faith, doesn't it? Anybody who just follows religion blindly and accepts what is said without question, I envy sometimes because I, I question everything. Um, my Catholic upbringing, I question because I met a lot of unchristian people, including teachers. Um, one thing I've found, and the friends on there might see this video and come and mention it, but one thing I found on Facebook was um, a reunion page for my old school. And it was a school that I, I loved it. It was my secondary school that you go to when you're 11. And I stayed there till I was 13, until I went into care um, for the next couple of years. But that school, it was fairly newly built. The majority of the teachers, apart from the domestic science teacher, and the needlework class. Um, the rest of the teachers were fantastic. And I was always top of the class there, A, B, C streams, always top of the A stream. In every subject except maths. And I came second in maths. I don't think I ever came first. I always came second after a girl called Susan Clinton. And I thought, what is she doing? How is she better than me? <laughs> but um, the only things I fell down on there were needlework and domestic science because my mother wouldn't give me the money or give me the ingredients and material to um, go and do these things. Domestic science, I was ridiculed and humiliated every week in the front of the class because I didn't have the domestic science, the ingredients for what they were cooking, the odd spud or something. And then in um, needlework, oh gosh, it was awful. I remember, um, I think it was my mother's friend who was lodging in the big house my mum had. And I, I might be wrong, but um, sorry, Mum, if it was you, but um, it may have been my mother's friend, Annie Dolan, who gave me the money for the skirt I'd made, which was the skirt that you had to have. It was the uniform, a Durndall, um blue and white check skirt, which I made and I was quite proud of. But um, the next skirt was a horrible, horrible brown um I don't know what sort of material it was, linen, brown linen skirt, and my mum wouldn't give me the money for it. 
and it was more or less made and she wouldn't give me the money for it. And I, I'd taken it home to show her, wouldn't pay for it. And I stopped going to school because I was just so humiliated by these two teachers, domestic science and needlework. I couldn't bear it. And um, one of my friends at the school, Eileen, Eileen Timoney, she, um, isn't it funny how this all comes back? She went and told the headmaster, Mr. Bishop, of the problems I was having at home. And he pleaded through her, he pleaded with me to come back to school, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't because I was so embarrassed and I wondered what everybody would say. And thinking back now, they probably wouldn't have said very much. The teachers would have been aware. So it went to court because I wouldn't go to school. And I remember being in the corridor before going in the courtroom and there was me, my mum, my elder brother. And um, I heard the school board man, the one who comes around, you know, finding out why you're not going and all the rest. I, I, is it now it should be something like Ofsted, but then it was the school board man who used to come around. I used to watch him walk into the house through the park and hide in the attic <laughs> when I saw him coming. But he was there and I heard him saying that... Um, it was about a young, a young girl, he called me, young girl, and um, very academic, very bright, very clever. Um, and she hasn't gone to school for so long and it's, it's not her fault. We found out it's not her fault um, and this shouldn't be happening. But um, anyway, it did. What got me onto that subject? I don't know. Anyhow, I'm feeling a little, I just wanted to give you an update, I'm feeling a little bit, quite a lot better. I don't know whether I look better, do I? I don't know. Maybe I should put some makeup on. Um, so I'm going to try and read this afternoon and I've done some research this morning for my brother because he's got to go to the hospital this afternoon. And I've rung him, I've got to ring my daughter and... Um, and I'll see. I hate not doing anything, but it's just not me. I'm normally very busy and busy with animal rights things as well. But I just um, have to work it out, I suppose. So it's day two of recovery. I'm going to do different days day two, day three, day four, day five, and see how well I'm doing. I've yet to weigh myself. I, I, I'll do it on Friday, if that's okay with everybody. Um, I just, I'm a bit frightened of getting on the scale because I'm frightened of how much weight I've, I may have lost. But I am eating now. I did eat yesterday and I'm eating okay today. I've had breakfast, I've just had lunch. Um, so I'll speak to you all later. Um, before I go, Ukraine I what can I say I've got a hair away. um Ukraine the president of Ukraine is inspiring is wonderful is made of steel the government made of steel sterling men powerful army um, rebuking Putin and the aggressors on every level. I feel so sad that the world is scared to do much more than impose sanctions on Russia because of the threat of a third world war, global third world war. Um, Zelensky, President Zelensky of Ukraine says that he feels Putin is wanting to wipe Ukraine off the face of the 
uh, so it doesn't exist. Ukraine is no more a part of Russia, as will Belarus be. And who's going to be next? Poland, Lithuania, Estonia. They're fighting for their lives, they're fighting for their country. It's been reported this morning that over 2,000, 2,000 civilians have been killed. 2,000 civilians have been murdered simply for being in their own country. Like I am now. And a bomb comes. A thermobaric bomb comes and wipes them out. Sweeps them up. Two thousand people. Any way that you feel that you can support Ukraine, whether it be by wearing the colours, I was going to get a skirt and a top, wearing the ribbons, speaking to people in the street, which I used to do all the time, speaking to your relatives, your friends, posting on your Facebook page, on Instagram, on Twitter, Sending money to the Red Cross or um, UNICEF or I'm sure there are other agencies set up specifically to help Ukraine. Anything you can do to help. Because the West is doing very little at the moment. God bless Ukraine. Bye-bye, everybody. Speak to you later or tomorrow. Bye-bye.